can we all just appreciate how it's 36 degrees right now in the United Kingdom? It actually feels illegal to be this hot in the UK. Now, I know some of you were going to say, well, it's 35, 40 degrees everywhere I live. Look, in the UK, it's not like that. It's different. The UK is not built for hot weather. 35 degrees feels like 50 degrees. But anyway, by purely clicking on this video, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. You have understood the most important part of a personal statement, supercurricular activities. Unfortunately, it's now time for the hard part, finding and doing these activities. Luckily for you, you have me, a second year engineering student at Imperial College London. And I'm bringing you not one, not two, not three, four, five, six, or eight. I'm bringing you seven of the best supercurricular activities that universities would love to see on your personal statement. I don't know why I made it so climatic like seven wasn't in the title and thumbnail. So if you're new around here, I'm Dennis, but my friends call me the BTEC Ali Abdel because I also post productivity hacks, student life, finance tips, but he gets millions of views and I don't. But you, yes, you can change that by subscribing down below. Yes, by subscribing down below, you can sponsor this broke student for absolutely free and help him get to his goal of a thousand subscribers. And along the way, I'm gonna be giving free advice on helping you get into the university of your dreams. Okay, so I was grateful enough to speak to the head of natural sciences and geology at Imperial College London, Professor Jamie Standing, really nice guy actually. And he said the number one thing he looks for in personal statements is passion. And my friends, the best way to convey passion in your personal statement is through supercurricular activities. This is because supercurricular activities occur outside of school hours, outside the curriculum, yet still center around academic subjects. This is different to extracurricular activities, which also occur outside the curriculum, yet these are more focused on soft skills, something like playing sport on the weekend to build your communication, for example. Okay, so let's talk through seven potential supercurricular activities that you can complete and add to your personal statement that will make these universities absolutely froth at the mouth. These super quick activities I'm gonna provide are in no particular order, but do stay till the end because number seven is the best and also improve my audience retention rates. Okay, so number one is read books around your course. This is standard and super easy to do. For example, in the run up to my course, Civil Engineering, I ordered and read Built by Roma Agrawal. I then picked one aspect of the book and discussed it in my personal statement for no more than three lines, as I'll show you here. Feel free to pause the video and read my personal statement, although I will have a full breakdown of this personal statement that got me into Imperial College London to study engineering in the near future, trust me, you do not want to miss it. Okay, so now ranking reading, let's talk through the plus points. Firstly, it is super easy to do, like there's books everywhere in the world, you can easily find one related to your course. Secondly, books are fairly inexpensive, you're dropping what, maybe seven to ten pound maximum, that's like what, one mil. Thirdly, it can be done at your own pace. You can read towards the end of the day. You can read in the morning. It's completely up to you. Unfortunately, like all supercurricular activities, there are some negative points as well. Firstly, it is not as highly regarded by universities as other supercurricular activities that I will tell you about. Secondly, it is also gonna be quite difficult to integrate this into your personal statement in a concise fashion. Overall, I give reading books a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, supercurricular activity number two is listening to podcasts slash watching videos on your course. In the 21st century, it is more than acceptable to source knowledge for your degree through digital media. I mean, I mentioned podcasts in my personal statement that got me into university. Two to three years ago when I applied, there was barely any podcasts on civil engineering. But nowadays, there seems to be a new podcast every other week that is recommended to me on Spotify, so you'll find loads in abundance. Alternatively, if podcasts are not really your style and you're more of a visual learner, then not to worry, documentaries can be easily found on YouTube for absolutely free that will revolve around your course. The plus points are these are completely free to access. Like reading, they can also be done in your own time and they're not very time consuming. You're giving up what, like an hour of your day, if that. The negative points are like reading it is very generic. And secondly, because it's not very time consuming, it doesn't show a complete abundance in effort for your subject. Overall, I give podcasts slash watching videos on your course a six out of 10. Okay, number three is an interesting one. It is creating blogs slash social media pages on the course you want to study. This is a really interesting one for me because I barely see anyone do it. Say you want to do medicine, for example. Imagine creating a TikTok where you talk about your favorite things about medicine or what you've learned about medicine so far. That shows a genuine passion for the subject. You leverage that and I'm sure universities will absolutely love it. I mean, I would. The plus points are it is super unique. This means it can set you apart from other candidates. It also shows genuine visible passion 
for your subject. Also, posting on social media, talking in front of the camera can improve your communication and public speaking skills, which you will need in university. And if it goes well, look, you could even earn some side income, which we all love and you will need in university. Unfortunately, the negative points are is that it will take genuine and consistent effort. It's not just reading one book. And also with social media in particular, it does involve you putting your face out there, which a lot of people are not really comfortable with. But overall, I give posting blogs slash making a social media page an 8.5 out of 10. Right, we are absolutely bombing through these, but super quickly activity number four is visiting museum exhibitions. This is another absolutely classic one for students applying to university. Check your local museums and if there's an exhibition on your subject, I'm telling you go man. It won't take a lot of time out of your day. More often than not, it's even free. You can learn a lot and even the fact that you're going out of the house to go to this exhibition in your own time will prove your passion for the subject. Now obviously where you live will be a huge factor on whether you're able to do this. I live in London, so I'm lucky enough to have all these museums on my doorstep. But if you live in the sticks, I'm afraid it might be a bit of a long trek for you. So the plus points to museum exhibitions are that is a hands-on learning experience. It'll give you an in-depth understanding of a unique point of your chosen subject. And you only need to dedicate one day of your life. For one day, you get a high return on investment. Of course, a negative point, and it's a big one, is fully dependent on the availability and your location. And for that fact, not a lot of people are able to do this. But for how you're able to leverage exhibitions, I'm giving it a seven out of 10. Okay, super curricular activity number five is attending open lectures slash completing online courses. Some universities in the evenings or on weekends do open subject lectures available to the whole public on specific topics or interests. And if you find one related to the course you want to study, Go. These can be extremely insightful and interesting as well because they are taught by experts in the field. Just type into Google open lectures or even public lectures in your city to find one that could be relevant to you. Or since COVID, a lot of them actually could be online now, which is perfect because it means you can benefit from these open lectures no matter where you live. Also, you could sign up for an online course in preparation for your desired subject at university. Sites like Udemy, and Coursera offer a great range, but they do also require some payment. Alternatively, edX can offer them for absolutely free and it's Harvard type lecturers, so you know it's gonna be of great quality. The plus points are there are lots of key and insightful information around your desired degree. Also, completing an online course shows key dedication for your subject. The negative points are that the degree does take a lot of time and effort, and the lectures, of course, are subject to availability. Overall, I give attending open lectures slash completing courses on your desired degree and eight out of 10. Okay, super quickly activity number six is entering competitions around your desired degree. This is another great option because it can be so diverse. For engineering in 2019, the year before I applied to university, I entered the Cambridge University Gonville and Keys Engineering Essay Challenge where I completed an essay on how to power the UK and achieve second place prize. And you know, I absolutely rinsed that on my personal statement. I know for other subjects, there's hackathons for coding slash computer science and Olympiads for all types of subjects. Search up if there's any for your desired course and how you can get involved with it. And on the off chance where there isn't anything around your desired course, you can pick a part that excites you or interests you and write a report slash do a presentation on it. Do anything that shows you want to apply yourself and learn more about your degree. Slap it on LinkedIn, discuss it concisely on your personal statement and you're good to go. The plus points for competitions is that they are prestigious and show genuine skill for your subject. They also more often than not come with a certificate or concrete evidence for the completion of the competition. You also get to know your course better, which in the run-up to university is invaluable. The negative point is that it is very hard to win as it is ultra competitive. Competitions are also quite time consuming and are limited to availability. Overall, I give competitions a nine out of 10. Before we move on to the seventh and final super curricular activity, if you are enjoying and find this content extremely useful, make sure to subscribe down below. You're getting all this information for absolutely free. Okay, so the seventh and final super curricular activity I'm gonna share with you today is relevant work experience. I'm gonna be honest, this is the best form of super curricular activity you can get. You have hands-on experience in the field you want to study. Don't get me wrong, all experience is good, but it's much easier to leverage if you have skills in the field you're doing your degree on. For example, you saying you want to study medicine and having experience in an actual hospital for a few months is gonna be way more valuable than saying you serve baguettes over summer in Subway. Unfortunately, to find work experience in summer, especially before attending university, is very hard. Reach out to 
any contacts you may have that could let you do this. But if you don't manage to find relevant work experience over the summer, don't worry. It's honestly not the end of the world. I managed to get into Imperial College London without any work experience in engineering whatsoever, so it is more than possible. The plus points of relevant work experience is that you get hands-on experience in the degree you wish to study. You gain practical knowledge that you can then apply to your degree and it is extremely highly valued by university. Of course, the negative point is that it's very hard to find opportunity and also it's very time consuming. But if you do manage to get relevant work experience in the run up to university and you manage to put that on your puzzle statement, it is 10 out of 10 for me. So there we have it. Those are my seven recommended super cricket activities that you can add to your personal statement. Although I probably mentioned a few extra as well throughout. Be sure to do a few of these and integrate them into your personal statement. If you want to see the super curricular activities that I personally did and my personal statement that helped me get into Imperial College London to study engineering, be sure to check out this video where I talk through my entire application process to Imperial College London, including the personal statement, the interviews and the entrance examinations. I drop a lot of free advice you don't want to miss. As always, thank you for staying until the end of the video. If you enjoyed and learned a lot of important and useful information, be sure to subscribe down below so you never miss one of my university application videos. I've been Dennis and I hope to see you a lot in the next video.